ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tosh. I am the main book buyer at Book Soup. And uh, we're starting a new series here called Tosh Talks. Um, you're probably now thinking it's going to be like the eight hour video table of me just chit chatting about everything. It's not going to be about everything, it's going to be about a specific book, mostly art books. And uh, I want to convey this to you because I feel an intense need to. Uh, communicate with you. So uh, allow me a couple seconds of your time to at least present you to a book that I find interesting at this moment. This is called Ferris. I'm going to be mostly speaking about art books. And um, the Ferris book, put this in front of my face. Um, no, the Ferris is a prominent, was a very prominent uh, gallery in Los Angeles in the 50s and <coughs> stopped functioning in the late 60s. What makes it prominent was, when it started in the 50s, there was no contemporary art gallery at all in Los Angeles. And the LA County Museum was mostly spending its time uh, focusing on landscape painting. They didn't have no abstract expressionist, they had no um, surreal art, or even anything before, like Dada's art, nothing modern except landscaping and portrait painting. So, two figures came up. One is um, a curator who had no art background whatsoever, but just had an interest in the visual arts by the name of Walter Hobbs, who was supposed to be, quote unquote, the business brain of the organization, uh, which was not true. He was totally uh, erratic and eccentric and uh, a fun person. And then a well-known artist who is now a very well-known artist who passed away <coughs> about 10 years ago by the name of Ed Keenholz. So Keenholz and Hobbs started this gallery because they knew fellow artists and they filled the type of art that they liked was not expressed in Los Angeles. New York had the abstract expressionism at the time, and, but there was nothing outside of New York City. So a lot of talent in Los Angeles. So Ferris Gallery with Ed and uh, Walter decided to focus on, um, on Los Angeles fellow artists. Now, by chance, what they were surrounded by was amazing town of people like Ed Ruscha, Ed uh, Keenholz, uh, Billy Al Bankston, um, who else here? Uh, my brain has been died. Um, um, Kenny Price, Ed Moses, all these people who are quite, um, all these kind of people who are quite well known uh, now were totally unknown at that time. So it seems like every show that was at the Ferris Galley became this really prominent, uh, uh, with a national interest, a national interest in Ferris Gallery. Uh, what happened was, uh, two years later, Walter and Ed Keenholz, who basically just showed uh, Los Angeles artists, lost interest in having a gallery, because Ed Keenholz was an artist and he preferred to do art more than uh, be a gallery owner. So he focused, so they met a gentleman by the name of Irving Blum, and Irving Blum was from New York, or from the East Side, and uh, more of a professional businessman. And he bought out um, the rights to the Ferris Gallery. Now, this book, Ferris Gallery, focuses mostly on the Irving Blum years. There's like two parts of Ferris Gallery. There's the Ferris Gallery of Walter Hobbs and Ed Keynotes, and then the Irving Blum years. And Irving Blum brought uh, Andy Warhol to uh, Los Angeles. Not only that, Ferris Gallery, the first place where Andy Warhol had his first solo exhibit. First time, not in New York, not anywhere else, but in Los Angeles, that's where Warhol had his first solo exhibit. And it was all soup cans, it was a soup can paintings. And uh, Irving Blum purchased the entire series for like $1,000. And for those of you in this hardy economic times who are sort of focused on the money issues, those soup cans are probably worth now like $15 million. Uh, which Irving Blum sold or donated to the uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York. So again, at the time, and still look upon, Los Angeles always looked down upon in the art world. And New York will always be the center of the world, in a sense, financially, until <laughs> recently. But Los Angeles always had um, um, a certain style, a certain aesthetic that is still going strong. And it was going strong in the 50s. But the Ferris was the first gallery just to focus on Los Angeles artists. Very scary.